In this real-time tutorial, I will show you how I painted this chickadee and floral wreath. So let's get started. Hello everyone and welcome to this real-time tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to paint a little chickadee on a wreath. I did this sketch yesterday. It's uh, just a, a loose idea. I wanted to get the balance of the the more weight on the bottom left and then balance it out on the upper and then have a little bit of lighter detail on the sides. I thought that would make a really nice balance. So what I'm going to do first is just sketch a really simple little chickadee that I have up here on my screen and I will link to that reference photo in the video description. So I'm, I'm thinking of having it, the entire wreath, I'm just going to really lightly draw a circular shape. Leave some broken areas there. Just as a guideline to make sure that I stay within the circle and don't get all, all wonky. Just keep it really, really light. This is a, you know what, this is a 2B. I should be using, I don't have my H. This Well, this will be a little bit lighter. It's an HB. It's a harder lead. Uh, should be a little easier to erase. I try not to use the heavy leads when I'm sketching on watercolor paper because it's a little messier and a little harder to erase. Anyway, so I sketch a roughly circular, circular shape. And right here, I'm just gonna make the little little head shape here. Belly. Back. The wing. Little overlap there, little mark there. I could probably be explaining this better, but I'm concentrating. So I, I didn't leave enough room for a long straight tail, so I'm just going to point it more upward. like so. Here's where the eraser comes in handy. Flatten the head a little bit and then little beak. This will be a black capped chickadee, so I'll make the black mark around like so. I have some fluffy feathers. And don't even worry about drawing the feet. <laughs> I'm going to cover that with some flower shapes. So I'm going to refer to my sketch again and 
and I think I'm not even going to draw much detail, but I will just draw a vague blob. Just to keep my sizing right, I'll do the detail with the watercolor. Then another, so that's going to be the rose. Then do another one behind the chickadee. Then here I'll do That'll be my five petaled flower. Another five petaled flower. I'm already deviating from my sketch. That's okay. And then we'll have a leaf thing here, a leaf thing there. Like so. And then we'll do another Another rose shape up there. And we're going to do some filler here, some there. And I'm not worried about drawing in the little details right now because I will be ad libbing a bit of that. I just wanted to get some of my basic um, shapes and proportions on the paper before I started painting. Like I said, that keeps me from getting too, too wonky or making things too big or unbalanced. So, draw in a little bit of the this bird will be really simple not too detailed. And, oh, that's right. I was going to do another little sideways flower going. Making it more of an oval shape there because it's going to be a bit tilted to the side. Same with this one. Okay. Now we erase that. I'm doing a little erasing not to hide what I did, just to soften it. Except for inside the flowers. Obviously you can you can sketch something on paper and transfer it to your watercolor paper. That's completely fine. I just wanted to do something a little quicker just to show you my thought process for how I come up with these wreath designs. Okay. Move that out of the way. And really do need to get All of that eraser dust off. Okay, so now we can start painting. And I'm using the same colors pretty much as this painting that I did last time. I have a video up. And I have the same colors on my palette just because they're still there. And I thought they were they worked really nicely and I wanted to use the same colors for this. I already pre-tested some of my color combinations. Keeping it kind of soft. We'll see if it stays soft. I tend to go brighter when I'm when I get ahead of myself, get a little carried away. <laughs> Um, but that being said, let's get started. 
and I'm going to start with the chickadee. What I want to do is mix, I think I need to add a little color to my palette here. I'm going to add a little sepia. And I already have some Payne's Gray. So let's take care of that. Okay, folks. No worries at all. All right. So I have my sepia. Mix a little with my Payne's Gray. Get it a really dark, almost black color. And I'm just going to start painting, painting the head. When I get a little bit more water on my brush, just to thin out that paint, wipe away the excess. Painting little strokes in the direction of the feather growth. Paint around that eye just for now. These little strokes give a little feather texture where the black meets the white feathers. So just start really subtly. And even this color, I'm not going to make it too intense right off the bat. I'll decide later how intense I want to build up all the colors and I don't want to start making the chickadee too dark then having the intensity of the flowers have to compete with that if that makes sense. Okay then use some of that same color. Let me just dab a little bit more in there. Okay, a little more of that same color on tips of the tail. And I'm going to take the tip of my brush here and just go like that all the way down, all the way down, all the way down, back to a little bit of watery puddle. For a little of that shadow area there. Rinse my brush, wipe out the excess moisture, and just subtly blend. And same thing here, I'm just going to softly soften those feathers around the face and chest. Now that it's drying, I'm going to mix a little bit more of that darker value. And just drop it in, tiny little strokes. give a little bit more texture within that dark area and right along the beak there too. I use that same same dark mix for the darker part of the wings so I'm just gonna little strokes on the very wing tips. 
just looking at my reference for where the darker shadows are. And just trying to simplify. So there's lots of little separate feathers here. So just like on the tail, Of course, it helps to have a really fine-tipped brush for this. I highly recommend black velvet. This is a size 8 brush, and you can see I'm still getting really nice thin lines just by using the tip, but the belly still holds quite a bit of paint when I need it. Okay, now I need a little bit more of a gray. So just a really lighter mix here of that, those same two colors just lightened out. And just stroking on those feathers there. Now for the body, I want a little bit of, let's add a little gold ochre here. Just a really light watery wash to see if we need to make any adjustments. That went a little too high up. There we go. This area is all white. So again, just doing some little strokes in the direction of the fur for feathers. <laughs> I obviously need more practice talking while painting. Then under the wing, it's in shadow, so I'm going to take some more of that sepia. darken that shadow area. Back to the gold ochre, just fill in some of those little, not all of those gaps, but just some. And I think a tiny bit of brown ochre. Just on some of those darker areas here. Back here where it's in shadow. And then this will be shadowed by the, the rose petal. So it just gives a little bit of dimension. If you'd like to see more of my bird paintings, I'll link some in the description so you can see how you can paint a little bit more realistic birds. Like I said, this one's just sweet and simple. A little bit of that on these tail feathers, maybe a little lighter. And 
these uh, upper wing areas also have separate feathers like that. And a little shadow here from where they overlap these longer feathers. I think they're called pin feathers. I'm not sure exactly. <laughs> Darken that a little bit more here. And overall, as you get, as you move forward, you can start to see where you might need to add some more darks or intensify shadows. I just try not to start too, too dark too soon. dry I'm actually going to make the eye using my micron pen get a really nice black To make that eye stand out a little bit more, I'm gonna add a little bit of gouache right around the outside. Painting a black eye inside black feathers can be, it can make it disappear. Not too much. Also, Be a little highlight here, just along anyway. It's easy for me to get carried away with painting birds and getting into all that detail, but I'm gonna leave the chickadee alone for now and show you how I paint some flowers. I'm gonna take a sec to wipe off my palette here. Okay, starting with the rose, I think I'll do a nice pretty pink rose. So I'm gonna take my My pink, my alizarin crimson, and I'm gonna add a little, little gouache. I'll be for the lighter color, for the darker middle. Add a little bit more of a concentrated alizarin. So we'll start here, and I always start in the middle, make a little, Kind of dot thing and then 
you start making some C shapes like little little commas each one barely touches the next and make sure you don't leave too much white space Then after that, I'm going to go into my lighter pink. Then this is where I'll make the, the broader strokes. I'm pushing my the belly of my brush against the paper, lift up, and that's part of how I'm getting that effect. right up to that bird and obviously these curves get larger following my pencil guidelines to make sure I don't get too carried away with, with the size Then just a little fine tuning. Go back into my, my darker one and adding it here and there on, towards the towards the inside, kind of letting that spread out. There. Then the hard part is knowing when to stop. So then I'm just going to rinse my brush, blot it. I'm blotting on my paper towel. You can see it down there. Blotting. And then I'm just going to go along the edge and soften it. going to do the same thing behind the chickadee. Start the little little mark, then a tiny little C shape. The shapes get bigger as you go. But stay tight tight knit so that you don't have too much white space. When I get about there, I'm going to stop. Mix a little more of that lighter pink. Use the belly of my brush to push that paint onto the paper. This one's be, uh, behind the chickadee, so be careful where you're stopping the paint. dry there so I'm just adding some water then use the darker paint to make adjustments deep in the middle add it to the bottom edge of your C shapes while the um, while the petals are still wet then it softly blends into the lighter pink Clean up any extraneous white space as needed. The 
soften that edge. And actually, I'm gonna add a little bit more of a darker pink, just behind the chickadee, like the chickadee is throwing a bit of a shadow. Okay, I do have to go back <laughs> just because it's got to deepen that. That shadow. I picked up a little bit of burnt sienna. just to do some sh more shadow on the chickadee's belly. Balance it out here. Okay, there. <laughs> I'm stopping for now on that bird. Okay, now let's do, let's do some slightly purple flowers. I have carbazole violet here and I don't want it to be too bright so I'm thinking add it to that pink that was there add a little bit more gouache. Let's see. It's still a bit intense. That's nicer. Maybe even a little more pink. Oh, that's really pretty. Okay. So I'm for this, I'm going to load my brush pretty heavily. And on this, I'm going to use the first the tip, then the belly, then lift off with the tip again. So starting in the middle. I'm just going to do that all the way around. And if you don't have enough paint on your brush, it'll do that. That's okay, just pick up the paint again. And I need to turn my paper. Then you're gonna have a petal that goes behind that rose, so I'm just gonna Paint that in there, adjust this one. All right, I'm going to I'm just filling it in because it got a little too too faint and I know it's gonna dry much lighter, so I just wanted to intensify that. Okay, then, so that's it for that one. I'm gonna go up here, and I'm already going a little bit bigger than, than I sketched out, but not by too much. Like I said, it's easy for me to get carried away. Okay, I'm gonna turn my paper this way. I'm gonna start with this one. This flower will be a little bit smaller. Okay. 
I'm cheating a little. <laughs> Filling in those shapes. Okay, and let's see, this is gonna go. behind that rose. Actually, that would probably be more like that as well. Then we have like, it's actually a completely different kind of flower. <laughs> we'll go with it. go back to this one I have my paints gray I'm gonna mix it up with the purple that's still on my brush I'm gonna just dab it in the middle just let it flow into that still slightly wet paint I'm going to give this a quick dry and do this rose over here. I'm going to need, I'm going to do the same pink color. I already got purple over here, so I'm going to find a new spot to mix. Next time I'll use my bigger plate. <laughs> It's just the same as we did before. A little over, slightly overlapping and touching. C or shot or comma shapes. Adjust the white areas. Darken that center a bit here. Then move on to my lighter pink. Use the belly of the brush. If you wanted to make sure that these roses were all pretty consistent with each other, then I'd say paint all the roses first. But since I jumped around and had to remix, my paint is just a bit different. I don't mind that because of the style anyway. But 
that's something to keep in mind. And one more. Oops, don't want a big glob like that. petals already starting to dry so I'm gonna help out that blend a little bit by wetting my brush and just softening those darker pink edges and filling in some of those those white gaps just a little bit This flower is nice and dry. I'm going to make a really dark purple again and just intensify that center. Then just dragging my wet brush across those petals. Just really subtly. Now for the, the sideways facing flowers. And I still think the pencil line's a bit dark. So I'm gonna erase it. Now that I got started, I can kind of trust myself to not go too crazy with the size and whatnot. So I think for this, I have this really nice peachy color. Peachy rose, a little bit more pink in there. And I'm just going to do really simple sideways facing flower. It's behind the purple one, so I'm just going to skip around that. This one too, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna change the direction just a little bit. Enjoy this part but I think the most fun for me is filling in around the main elements I get to use different colors and shapes for the leaves and the little little flowers and then I just seeing it fill out and just kind of come alive is like I don't know that's that's my favorite part 
I'm adding a little bit of pink to that one. I'll do the same over here. I'm going to look at my sketch again. And I'm seeing I have some some viney leaves coming out here, some rose leaves, some little yellow things. So that's kind of giving me a good starting point. I might not add all of that, but I'm going to start with um, some of those little little yellowish flowers. So I'm going to do also peach, but with a little bit more yellow. And I'm just going to make little globs kind of randomly. I'm going to be, um, I don't know, like little little popcorn shapes, not perfectly round. And I'm making sure that I stay in this general general curved shape. And this one, I'll do more on, towards the outside here. to mix up some green. Using that yellow. And my paint's gray. And I'm just going to, starting from behind this rose, just the tip of my brush, a little swoop. And I'm doing, I'm using the pressure again, putting the point down on that stem, pushing down and letting up. And doing it backwards is not as easy. <laughs> so I'm gonna turn my paper around again. I'm kind of alternating. so easy the first way. Okay. I'm going to take some of that yellow. I'm going to just drop that in. Just add some color variation. Not necessary, but And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, but I'm gonna have it coming more through here. Got a little too thick there. I'm just going to fix that and turn it into a leaf. Just pushing down, pulling back, pushing down, pulling back. Going behind those petals. Okay, I'm 
going to paint some leaves off of this rose. Make a jagged. I made. I mixed a more of a dark green from that um, Payne's gray. I'm leaving a little white stripe for that vein in the middle. Just sketching out the shape, then filling it in. And do the same thing on this side. Oh dear. <laughs> there. Apparently got some paints on my hand. Okay. So I want to make sure that I still keep it in that circle shape. So I'm going to add some more elements that kind of go up to meet that leaf here. Then sort of around to meet that leaf there. So I'm going to use some more yellow. I'm going to neutralize it a bit just for some of these. So I'm going to take the yellow, give me some more of that. Yellow, and there's already some Paints gray on it, and now I'm gonna take just a dab of that purple with the white gouache. It makes a really nice color to contrast with some of these brights. So now I just get to decide where where to put it. A little one here. Let's make some little, maybe some little round leaves. Balance that out back here. some more of a really light yellowy green to contrast with these dark rose rose leaves. So again I'm just going to turn this 
around so I can get a better flow from my wrist. I swear this is the worst luck <laughs> today. Okay. Looks more like a little fern. Just make the little leaves shorter as you go up. And then same on the other side. Same thing over here. Let's go just slightly outside of this flower. So the leaves are kind of hiding behind those right there. I'm going to add a dark stem for this. So it goes straight up through the middle. And connect and the same over here Gonna use my pink to make a little center dot in these little flowers here. Just fine tuning as I go. Let's see, what else can I do? Hmm. Maybe a few more little subtle leaves. Maybe some more of that neutral green in a different shape. That'd be pretty. Maybe we'll have it. I could just do it like kind of floating in space, but I wanted, kind of want it to look like it's all somewhat connected. So instead, I'm just going to have it kind of come out from behind this leaf. Okay. 
just really subtle. This one will come from, mm, let's see. This one, I guess I didn't explain when I was doing it. Just little tiny pointy spoke, um, strokes. I'm just using the tip for this one because it's so small. I'm not using the, the belly or pressure. Just pretty much outlining it with my light, light watery paint there. And I think we need a couple more things coming out from that rose. Let's do, let's do more of a mid-tone green here. Again, just mixing that, oops, that, <laughs> that was not my Payne's Gray. Here we go. kind of branching out here. Actually, instead of leaves, put little little buds on those. What color? Yes, purple. Purple would be lovely. And maybe a purpley magenta. Get it nice and watery. I'm just gonna make those just kind of float around those stems. You know, like I said earlier, you can plan every detail if you like, but sometimes you get the inspiration for new ideas while you're in the middle of painting. And I wouldn't have thought to do that, and I think that's a really, really cute and nice touch. Again, make it nice and watery.
think it's looking pretty good. I feel like it needs a little something. Thinking something around here. It needs more pink. Mix up some more of that with my gouache. And what can we do? But just some simple little A little five petal. No, little 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 cherry blossoms, maybe. Just in a cluster. It kind of helps close the circle. I like that because it kind of balances out, you know, the roses, kind of connects them a little bit more. And same thing on this side. Let's see, right, right in here. going to take a look and assess. I think at least one of these roses needs a leaf like this one. If I do it here, it'll kind of break the circle. So I'm thinking maybe right here in between. Make it a little smaller than the other one. this video is giving you some some insight into how I I plan out a or lack to, of planning rather a composition and just kind of making decisions as you go I was watching a tutorial yesterday from Louise Damasi and if you haven't 
seen her videos, you definitely should. Um, she was talking about how after a session of painting, she gets really tired because it's, it's constant decision making and not just where to put things, but how to paint it, how to approach it, how much water should I use, how much pigment does it need to be wet on dry, wet on wet. Um, What's my point? <laughs> I guess um, my point is it's work sometimes. <laughs> um, not always relaxing, I guess, but it's still rewarding. And I think the more you can kind of push yourself outside your comfort zone and learn new things, then certain things will become easier and and you'll get some more of that um, you know meditative relaxing um, state of mind I I like to do both I like to do things that challenge me especially with birds or animals or other intricate things um, but then sometimes I really like to do something that I know is going to be simple and easy and relaxing so it just comes with yeah pr practicing the things that are harder for you helps you to have a repertoire of more things that are are easy For me, painting uh, loose style anything has been hard, hard for me because I, I tend to want to do lots of detail. So here I'm just going um, over, I'm doing a little bit of overlapping I wasn't sure if I was going to do that, but I think it's going to make it look more natural. Maybe not natural, but I don't know. I, just, I like how that looks. <laughs> I think that might have been off camera and I apologize for that. Right, I think um, the last thing, no, not the last thing. First, I'm take some purple and I'm going to just dot inside here. And over here. I like these ferns, but they're a little too light, so I'm going to do another layer. Uh, I don't want to do another fern though. What am I what am I gonna do? It's more of that push and pull. Then on this one, it doesn't always have to be the same on both sides. Clean that up a little bit. Of 
course I couldn't finish the painting without one more <laughs> mistake. I swear this does not happen to me very much. Okay. You might have some pencil lines here and there that need a little tidying up, but other than that, um, yeah, that's, that's our wreath. Hope you liked this video, and um, if you want to see more from me, please subscribe to my channel, give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and that's it. Thank you for joining me for this long real-time tutorial, and I will see you next time. Bye!